The right here broadcasting live in the Republic of South Africa in Midrand. And uh, if you have just joined us, uh, we hope that you haven't missed much. Of course, uh, as we are continuing with our interview on the Green Cross, South Africa's unemployment rate has increased by 1%, uh, point to 30.1% uh, in the first quarter of 2020 compared to the fourth quarter of 2019. The unemployment rate among the youth was higher, uh, especially and uh, in education level as graduates uh, of unemployed, unemployed graduates increased significantly for the age between the ages of uh, 15 and 24. In the studio, now we are joined by Mr. Mario Kumalo, who is the president of South Africa First to party to discuss, you know, the possible solutions to these uh, issues. Uh, Mr. Kumalo, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the Green Couch this morning. We are, of course, discussing an unfortunate situation whereby uh, the unemployment rate it is continuing. Uh, we are having a whole lot of people that are now unemployed. I mean, we're looking at about 3 million people that have lost their jobs during the period of COVID-19. What is your take on this? Uh, first, good morning to everyone morning. and to the viewers out there and to the world at large. Yes, yes. good morning. Look, to start with, Mr. Mboweni yes. is working on a very, how can I put it, bad president if I may put it this way. Yes. We cannot even have a way forward to start with until we address the issue of illegal immigration. Okay. Because it is a million South Africans who will be losing jobs. Yes. Not a million foreign nationals who will be losing jobs. Yes. That's a conflict. Mm -hmm. We always talk about South Africans being affected. Mm -hmm. We never talk about foreign nationals being affected. Mm. So what we need to do as a country we need to start with immigration because that's where also the problem comes in. Yes. Currently, we have South Africans who are sitting at home with CK documents, BEE certificates, mm. test clearance certificates, mm. and don't have access to business space. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to find a way forward, we need to actually create space within our country for our citizens first. Yes. That's what needs to happen. Yes. So we can increase the budget. We can borrow money from other countries. Yes. It is not going to change anything. Yes. Thus far, we have taken 500 billion. Mm -hmm. What have you achieved as a country? Mm. Well, Mr. Kumalo, um, I understand what, you, what you're saying, and I, I, I think, you know, I hear where you're coming from. But there's also been a report in one of the business newspapers that says that your party, South Africa um, First yes. your Party, is actually xenophobic and what would you have to say about it because now what you're saying you're focusing more now on um, foreign nationals um, rather than what the country is dealing with is your country is your party xenophobic our party is not xenophobic it's realistic these are facts we have to be factual as a country what we are saying is that let us create an environment where our citizens are thriving. When you look at the budget speech this year, small businesses didn't even get 10 billion, which shows there's a big gap. We need to fill up that gap. If you go to cities, a lot of business space is occupied by outsiders. What we are saying in South African first, let us have our people occupy the space so that the Department of SMEs will be compelled to fund South Africans, because small businesses will also contribute to job creation. It is not just only about private sector alone, but small businesses are very, very important at the same time. Mm -hmm. How do you fund South Africans who don't have access to business space? Because it means their business plan is incomplete. Mm -hmm. Their projected analysis reports are incomplete. Mm -hmm. So let us create an environment where it's beneficiary to our citizens. Yes. We are not saying foreign nationals should, should not come to the country. But what I'm saying is people need to come into the country accordingly. If you go to SARS, if you ask the Reserve Bank and you ask Home Affairs about financial reports of foreign nationals running businesses in this country, they don't have them. So the question is, how did they even start those businesses? Have they invested anything into the country? No, they haven't. So now we are sitting with a million more South Africans losing jobs. But are we creating space? Mm. whereby South Africans are actually participating economically. Mm. If you go to social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook, South Africans are constantly posting what they're doing. Please support my business and that. But they don't have business space. So how do you find the South Africans on social media doing wonderful things, 
but they don't have access to business space. Mm. That is a problem in itself. So to have a way forward, it is not just about government only just creating jobs. It's also about looking in within the parameters of what's affecting each and everything else. Mm. We are sitting with a huge surplus of educated students, but they don't even have jobs themselves. Mm. So we cannot actually keep doing the things the same way. You look at the corporate tax rate, it's at 28%. Mm -hmm. We need corporate tax reform. Mm -hmm. How about we work from 22%? Mm -hmm. So we can actually have a stimulus. Mm -hmm. We can boost the engine. We cannot work from 28%, and yet we are choking businesses. We expect them to invest and create more jobs and pay people. We, mm -hmm. can, we just can't work from that premise anymore. You, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're quite uh, aware of the issue that uh, in South Africa we are facing, which is uh, skills. Uh, we, we are declared as uh, unskillful. A lot of our young people uh, do not have the skills that are required, especially in a workspace. So as South Africa first, how do you come and say that uh, let us put South African first, but the South Africans that are not even skilled? First of all, South Africans are skilled. There's never been a study to say South Africans are not skilled. They are skilled. Mm -hmm. They are very creative. You look at the world's economy today, 75% of the world's economy is knowledge-based economy. And that's where we're working from. They are talking about fourth industrial. They don't even understand what it means, these politicians. Look, South Africans are skilled. Let us give them the opportunity to actually excel and practice. We are not even doing that. We are making excuses. Are we the only country that needs skills? Many countries around Africa, they don't have a good financial structure. Why are they not taking skills over there? Why are they bringing them also here? It's flawed. It makes no sense. South Africans are skilled. They're not being given the chance and opportunity they deserve. They do. Yeah. So uh, if we can go back, maybe mm -hmm. elaborate a little bit on the, on the issue of uh, your organization, uh, you know, pushing and vowing for uh, South Africans. Yes. Are you having a, a specific, because South Africa is, of course, a rainbow nation. Um, mm -hmm. We've got uh, uh, various uh, ethnic groups in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for all South Africans or you are basing maybe a specific race that you feel that it is uh, uh, maybe less given attention in the economic space? We represent all South Africans. We are not a party just for blacks. We are a party for everyone. You look at the colored community, they're very gifted, they're very talented. Nobody's paying attention to them either. So we cater to everyone because it is a country for South Africans. Mm -hmm. Despite the differences we have, but we have many, many wonderfuls we can do together. The Rugby World Cup has proven that. People are thirsty for unity. We are not even doing that. We keep playing the race card, and yet we have so much to offer the world but we are not using our people the way we're supposed to. Hence, we are saying, let us create space for South Africans, the space mm. they deserve. Mm. It makes no sense when we have business laws yes. and those laws are being circumvented. Yes. If we were actually paying respect to the laws of the country, we wouldn't have such an influx of illegals. Mm. If Botswana was not paying attention to its laws, Botswana will be having the very same problem as we. Mm. Namibia would, but because they respect their laws, that is why nobody can actually go there because it's not a playing ground. But why is it happening in our country? This is a huge, huge, huge problem because now we have illicit cash flows, we borrow money from foreign countries, and then we raise taxes, rates, and tariffs on our citizens to pay back the money. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you no, saying, no, no, no. sorry, Pal, uh, are you now saying that uh, maybe our constitution, um, because it, our constitution does say that South Africa belongs to those who live in it, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you came here legally or legally, as long as you live here, this is your country as well, according to our constitution. So are, are you saying that uh, our constitution is actually not uh, uh, drafted quite correctly to accommodate everybody? Because once you get into this country, mm -hmm. you've got a right. Uh, if, if you get injured, you go to the hospital. Uh, they will ask you about your permits afterwards. Uh, what is important is that you must have access to our facilities, our, 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 our hospitals, our schools, everything else. We'll deal about how you got here at a later stage. Look, the Constitution can never contradict itself. We need to understand the context. When they said everyone, they only adopted that phrase because it was used back then in the 1950s when our people were forced to move into the homelands. So it was to cater to all South Africans, but then they chose it to put it again as a reminder. The Constitution cannot talk about strictly citizens and everyone. That everyone refers back to citizens, mm -hmm. but now everyone else has been taken advantage of that phrase. So in that 
with that being happening right now, we can amend that to make it clear, but it does not contradict itself. No one has a right to just come in and do as they please unlawfully, mm -hmm. because we wouldn't have an Immigration Act if that was true. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't. Mm. Yes. Well, also um, on one of the reports that I read, you know, that um, about uh, South African First yes. um, Cities, uh, South Africa First Party, mm -hmm. I think you mentioned also that once your party comes into power, mm -hmm. the first thing that you will do is to make sure that all foreign nationals, you know, leave South Africa within 48 hours. Would you like to elaborate more on that statement that um, your party has said? People came into the country illegally. Home Affairs is very corrupt. It is compromised. They are selling documentation. You can't even prove anymore who came legally and illegally. We have a case against Home Affairs for violating those very same laws. Officials are taking bribes. We cannot justify crime. We cannot award and congratulate people for breaking the laws of this country because it is South Africans that suffer at the end of the day. Each and every other country in Africa is doing the right thing. Ghana just did it recently, and it's not xenophobia. Why is xenophobia only used in South Africa? And I will tell you why they do that. It's because of benefits. If you go to any sector, anywhere in the country right now, Zimbabweans group themselves, Ethiopians group themselves, Malawians group themselves, everybody's grouping themselves based on their nationality. But they want to preach this one thing, one Africa. It's a fallacy. It's all about benefits. People are here just to milk and take from South Africans. It is not fair. We, we have to level the playing field. We mm -hmm. are not doing that. African leaders need to take responsibility for their own people. People are drowning in the ocean, sailing all the way to Europe. Why are they not being responsible? Who said South Africa has the right and is obligated to feed the entire continent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we benefiting from Africa? Why should we be part of the African Union? What is its duty? We are the biggest coffers of AU and SADC. And what do we get in return? An influx of poor people, thugs, criminals, murderers, drug dealers, young girls are turning to prostitutes in our country. And nobody says anything. And the moment you speak, it's xenophobic. How so? Mm. Well, so while other parties, you know, like about EFF, you know, they're actually rooting for open borders. So as, is it different, you know, from a South Africa First Party? You do not uh, believe in open borders? And why? Open borders is just madness. If, be if people believe in open borders, then we are saying to them, get rid of your security guards, because they have bodyguards. They must get rid of that first. They must get rid of alarm systems in their homes. They must break down the walls, and let's see if it works for them. Then we shall talk borders. Mm -hmm. And for anyone to say, no, borders came with the whites or anything, it's a lie. We had demarcations before the whites. Demarcations with borders. The more economies get sophisticated, borders should be sophisticated as well. Mm -hmm. There's a security guard when I walked into this building. That's a border. Mm -hmm. I can't just come in. I have to declare. Mm. Absolutely. So now, th there are people, though, that uh, come to South Africa mm -hmm. legally. Because I understand you say you are dealing with illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, and you did mention, though, that there is another problem where uh, purpose of being in the country or permits to be in the country is being sold, it's being purchased, so you can easily access uh, those. So uh, for those that maybe come to the country and apply for asylum, because they are running away from their countries where there are wars, there are so many different ways in which, uh, uh, you know, they are, they are running. Uh, what do you say about those, I mean, those uh, immigrants that are coming here to, for safety? Number one, there's no war in these countries. These are economic migrants, and it should be illegal for people to leave their country just because of economic situations, as if we don't have an economic situation in this country. Since 94, how many South Africans are having a better life? People cannot be coming here looking for a better life, when yet South Africans haven't really had a better life. Just because we have a few number of black South Africans benefiting from BEE, it doesn't balance the equation. We are far from that. It doesn't balance, it balance crazy the surface. Mm -hmm. So we have to be fair. Why is Africa not sharing this burden? Why should South Africa carry the burden alone? Mm. Why are we not building safe havens for these people if there's wars in their countries? Mm. There's been a very uh, strong notion on this uh, that uh, South Africa was assisted by so many uh, countries uh, to gain the freedom, which is what we're probably still paying for uh, until today, so that we can open our borders for everybody to come in, because they also opened their borders for us to come in uh, during the time that we needed them. So what do you have to say about that? Number one, parasites will say that. And look, I'll be frank. Africa has 54 countries. 
out of those 54, three countries hosted South Africans during the armed struggle. It was not the entire of Africa. It was three countries, and our people were placed in camps. It wasn't free for all. It was based on conditions and restrictions for South Africans to go to, 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 go to those countries. They were not being employed over there. It was strict, and there is no one from Lotuli House will argue with me, because I know the facts. They are being very, very duplicitous, as far as I know. There's so much dishonesty happening. Politicians are not real. They lie all the time. Hence, I am not a politician. I am a nationalist and a protectionist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, what is a protectionist? Sorry to just yeah. divert you in there, but uh -huh. please you can continue to finish the, to answer that question and then you can actually uh, describe yourself to us and let us okay. get to understand what you mean by being a nationalist. A nationalist meaning we work from the premise of national interest, national pride, and national identity. Yeah. That doesn't mean we shouldn't trade with the world. We can trade with the world, but it should be based on strategic partnerships. We cannot just trade with any country. Yes. Why should we can't trade with a country where they don't even have a hospital? Mm. You know, they can't even produce a water pump. What are we going to benefit from them? Mm. We need to be working with countries that actually they are both mutual agreements where they are good benefits. Mm. We cannot trade with countries whereby we don't actually get any, what we get from them is just people. Mm. We have our own people. Mm. Take care of your own, we take care of ours. We can have exchanges there and there, but it should end at that. And then protectionist is to protect each and everything that's South African. So how do we root out illegal immigrants? Let's say now you are becoming a president, South Africans vote for you. Mm -hmm. Now you need to go ahead and, and start you know, uh, rooting out and removing um, mm -hmm. illegal immigrants. How are you going to get them? Because they do mm -hmm. deport them from time to time mm -hmm. and, and send them to Lindela. What is your strategy? Uh, let's find out. What's, what's your strategy right now? Get into uh, space, being mm -hmm. voted as the president of uh, South Africa, and now you have to take decisions that uh, now mm -hmm. foreigners uh, that are illegal in this country need to go? And how do you have also ensure that those that have got permits to be in the country uh, legitimately got those permits? Mm -hmm. Look, each and but every day, you know, without all these xenophobic attacks, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we don't want to come out as, you know, violent people. We've had a lot of, you know, history where foreign na na nationals were actually banned, you know, especially in townships and yes, all. Yes. So what is your uh, take on that? And how, like Sisanda is asking, how would you stop that? Okay. You know? I will, mm -hmm. can I start with, uh, to give a response that I'm going to come to you, because I think we have to start with us. Okay. When Tabo Mbeke was president, we had issues nothing happened. It didn't just happen out of the blue. Many, many terrible things were happening to our people. Hence, South African First was born to say, there's no political voice. Things need to be done systematically. Yes. The reason why we were founded, it was for the very same reasons, being against violence. Mm. You know? But if there's no stance or anything, people will do whatever they feel is right. Yes. You know? But anyway, to answer your question, Countries need to comply. We will shut down embassies of any country that has its citizens running amok in our country. We need to be tough as a country. Africa is holding us at ransom. China is holding us at ransom. It is crazy what's happening. We need tough leaders, strategic you know, negotiators, good negotiators. We don't even have that. But we have them, not in, 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 in politics, but in business, we do have them. Mm. So we need tough negotiators for South Africa to move forward. Yeah. You tell countries, take care of your people. We are shutting down embassies. We have to review diplomatic relations, bilateral ties, trade relations, and so forth. Mm. That's how it works. Yeah. The Defense Act is very clear. Section 12, subsection A and B. Mm -hmm. Soldiers need to be deployed at all times. It's not even happening. And yet we have presidents and ministers who take an oath to serve this country. I'll tell you, the problem in South Africa, we are not running this country from the constitution of the country. Yeah. South Africa has been governed by the constitution of Lutuli House. That is a conflict. Mm -hmm. It is a conflict. We have laws and nothing is happening. It, mm -hmm. it, it cannot happen this way. People come in, guns, drugs. What is going on? Mm. 
Uh, are you not maybe in, in also maybe the similar belief like uh, we do that uh, another problem is that uh, our security system is, is that's where our problem is because police will catch these people police will catch uh, drug users police will catch uh, uh, you know uh, guns smugglers and human traffickers and whatever our own very police our South African police they are the ones that are complicit to this type of crime so what is your party intending to do to start by rooting out the corruption within our own spaces police officers caught in the act will be given a life sentence we cannot negotiate that we need to be tough we need to take a tougher stance we have good police officers and also we have bad ones but we have to be tough we can be making excuses you look at what's happening right now we have you know all these inquiries and nobody gets arrested so police officers caught in the act should be arrested politicians mm. calling the act should be arrested as well if it means they should be given life, they should be given life in prison because it is bad for the country. We want South Africa to be highly competitive. Mm -hmm. We want South Africa to be attractive. We need to transform black neighborhoods to meet, to meet economic standards. Mm -hmm. Currently, people are living in shacks. People don't have access to clean water mm -hmm. and transportation. Yes. 26 years later, we're still talking about apartheid. Yeah. What is it exactly that we're doing? Are we a country that's, that has a vision? I believe so, we do, yeah. but not the current people that are leading us. Yeah. Mm. Well, Mr. Yeah. Kumalo, when did um, your party start and where do you see your party maybe in the next five years or ten years? Do you see, uh, guys see, um, see yourself like um, taking, uh, like governing, you know, South Africa? Yes, we believe, yes, we, we were formed in 2016, December 19, 2016 with the IEC registered. And in the next five years, we're going to be making great, great strides, many, many wonderful things. People are responding well to our call, not just black South Africans, also in the colored community in many other sectors. Mm. We want to transform South Africa. Mm. You know, um, looking at the world, we are part of the BRICS, and yet we haven't been to space. It makes no sense to us to say Russia's been to space, China's been to space, India. Now it's a race between South Africa and Brazil. So why would you actually partner with countries that are serious about being advanced, and yet we are not? Mm. Mm. So we need to change the approach, yeah. the way we think, the way we yeah. do things. Mm. Like I said, 75% of the world's economy right mm. now is yeah. knowledge-based. Yeah. Maybe in closing, uh, uh, President, th th there are two, uh, maybe three, uh, you know, uh, major issues that South Africa has. We've got the issue of the Oppenheimers, we've got the issue of, uh, you know, your Ruperts, and we've got the issue of your Guptas yes. that have came into the country and literally just uh, looted. And uh, the likes of the Oppenheimers and the Ruperts, they are still continuing um, to loot the country. What are you planning to do about those? See, the beauty of being a nationalist, you attack those things without compromise. We are not liberals, we are not Democrats. Yeah. We are nationalists, yeah. meaning everything for South Africa. Yeah. If it is not for this country, then it is not good for us. Mm. But that doesn't mean we don't want to have strategic partnerships with the world. Mm -hmm. But it should be beneficiary to us. You look at what's happening in the mining sector. Yes. It is not making sense. But it should be beneficial to us. And it doesn't only end with the, uh, the people who work in the mines. Yes. But we should extend it to say, if our minerals will be mined, it's not just about taking them. We need to create actually environments whereby products are done within the country and they leave the country as finished products. Yes. You know, we actually extend the skills yeah. and we extend the infrastructure and developing communities and many other things. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are looking at, you know, mm -hmm. to where South Africa needs to be a first world country. Yeah. We cannot have our people selling sweets and tomatoes all the times on the streets. For how long should they do that? Mm. We want opulence. We want South Africans to have a great lifestyle because we believe we are superior. Mm -hmm. We are a great nation, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we want to see as a party. Mm. Well, Mr. Kumalo, you know, we're still celebrating, you know, Women's Month, you know, this month of August. I just want to find out, you know, what role do women play in your party? And like, how do you include women? in your party? Will they be leading? Will they be part of decision making in your party? Absolutely. For example, our national chairperson is Victoria Mamakova. She's a lady. She's a woman. Mm -hmm. We also have the deputy secretary, Doris Mguni. Mm -hmm. And we have other women in the pipeline as well. So we work hand in hand with them. It is not just mm -hmm. the man. Even if you go to our website, you will see that, that we have also women in strategic key positions. Mm -hmm. Because women are also very smart and very intelligent and creative. Hence, we are saying, let us create space for South Africans so they can excel. 
Let us focus on our people. We haven't done that. We are constantly focusing on the same people as if South Africa has nothing to offer. South Africa has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. And all we are saying is, let us be fair mm -hmm. and create space for our people because mm -hmm. they come first. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of our comments here, before we can let you go, mm -hmm. are from Olisa Sizolwamizulu. She's saying mm -hmm. that uh, we are led by old people who only value money before their own people. Would you agree to that? Absolutely, 100% correct. And hence we are saying we need to level the playing field because South Africans have so much to offer. I mean, if we have South Africans participating, having access to business space, then you should understand there'll be more budget. We can have a budget 60, 80 billion for small businesses because it means more South Africans are actually participating. It's inclusive. Like I said earlier, you go to social media, there are South Africans doing artifacts, many, many wonderful things asking for support, but we can't have access to those products they're doing because there's no business space. Yeah. Business space is actually taken by people who are not even supposed to occupy that business space. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kumalo, for joining us. And uh, we hope that, uh, you know, you will continue fighting the fight uh, to put South Africans first. And uh, hopefully one day we'll see you in Parliament and uh, yeah. having face-to-face -face and uh, pushing your way forward. We'll be uh, watching the space and see how you're going to go about that. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. That was the president of South Africa First Party, Mr. Um, uh, Mario Kumalo, speaking to us here about uh, ways in which uh, his party is working towards in order to put South Africa and South Africans uh, first. Uh, having said that, we are going to take a very short break. When we're coming back, we have Tintua Lunguna right here. We'll be discussing, you know, how do people get scammed in this world? I mean, the likes of Abu Palisa, they put money in the bucket of millimil. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in order to <laughs> get to, to, to get it that, uh, multiplied <laughs> and that, that's a form of uh, you know what yeah. I don't really understand no, yeah. so please uh, stay with us forward, uh, we have got more to plan. talk about <laughs> Tech Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution the whole world is facing a transformation the revolution will be developed into the following stages digitization Cyber security, Internet of Things, Managed Services, Document Management, and Business Applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. The coronavirus outbreak. Experience the extraordinary. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Mexico is, in fact, you will soon find out. It is a day to celebrate. We don't approve at all what's going on. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily unusual. Challenge your ordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. The day will come when these measures are no longer needed.